Hey guys and welcome back. So uh, we talked about this like many times over the year in all sort of different topics, but then it might seem like uh, there's still a long path to go, but uh, now it's here because today is October 13 and tomorrow in October 14, Windows 10 goes end of life, which means no more updates, including no security updates there's a catch i'm going to talk about it later but end of life means no more updates at all including no more security updates and you might think like i don't care uh so what i'm going to continue to use that and while i do understand this uh approach and idea on some home computers it's definitely not uh, a good idea because your computer is not going to be secured if there are going to be some vulnerabilities found for the Windows 10 and there definitely will be. It means that your computer, which most likely is also connected to the Internet, is going to be fully exposed to all of that stuff. And if we talk about the companies, the enterprises that still many of them use Windows 10 and some that have not the newest computers, are also most likely using Windows 10. Well, for them, that's especially increasingly risky and definitely not recommended. And nobody really wants to do that. Nobody wants to sit on end of life operating system, not even a software, just an operating system, which is exactly the reason why people and companies went completely crazy. Um, yeah, they just are not happy with this fact at all. And uh, what makes all of this worse that Windows 10, Windows 11 has uh, quite a rough requirements for many uh, for TPM 2.0 as example, which uh, might not be supported by some older computers. And yes, there are ways how to avoid that and, and, and make it supported just to have your Windows 11, but it doesn't work on all computers as example. Like it's not so easy to achieve that on a laptop. In some cases, it might not, might not be possible at all. And long story short, the result of all this this history, not a history, but uh, of all this madness from people, from consumers, is the fact that we can see right now on the screen, Windows 10 Consumer Extended Security Updates. And basically, the Microsoft is allowing to apply for extended security updates for additional year. And not like all of the problems are going to disappear after the year, but still, um, you'll have more time. And there's a lot of speculation and a lot of uh, talks about uh, what it actually means, because it's not just uh, continue to work and everything is going to be fine. There are some prerequisites and we're going to talk about them. And there are also five different myths about... Uh, all this stuff about end of life and extended security, we're going to talk about that too. So Windows 10 extended security updates, ECU prerequisites. Basically, there are just few conditions. To enroll in a consumer Windows 10 ECU program, make sure your device meets the following requirements. Device need to be running Windows 10 version 22H2, which is the latest version of uh, greatest almighty Windows 10. Uh, device needs to have the latest Windows update installed, obviously, like your computer needs to be up to date. The Microsoft account used to sign into the device must be an administrator account, and the Microsoft account cannot be a child account. There's still sad news if you are um, enterprise, if you are because, well, the consumer ECU program cannot be used by commercial devices. Cons consumer ECU enrollment won't be offered to devices in the following scenarios. Devices in case kiosk mode, device joined to Active Directory domain or that are Microsoft Entra joined. Uh, devices enrolled in a mobile device management MDM solution, devices that already have ECU license. So for companies, uh, you kind of don't have any other options. You are obligated to move to Windows 11 or you might choose some more drastic direction and start using Linux on your computers, which will make most of your employees go completely crazy, most likely, especially if they're not like IT people and not so much used uh, for, for, for the Linux stuff. But how, that's, how much that stuff actually costs? Because it's not free. And you can enroll to ESU in one of the following three ways. At no additional cost, if you are sensing, syncing your PC settings, and that's also one of the myths that we're going to cover here. Keep in mind and read carefully, syncing 
PC settings. You are not obligated to sync your data. You are not obligated to sync your games, pictures, music, videos, documents, whatever. Just the settings. Through some Microsoft application, it's going to be synced on your OneDrive, and then you can get it for free. You can also redeem 1,000 Microsoft reward points. And uh, to be fair enough, I have absolutely zero idea how you can actually get them, which makes it quite likely that a majority of viewers and Windows 10 users don't know that as well. So you just don't have them. And the third option is one time purchase of $30 USD or local currency equivalent plus applicable tax. So 30 bucks for a year of extended support or it's going to be for free, but you need to sync your PC settings. And for those who are pretty much worried about uh, transparency and privacy and all of this stuff, most likely, even if we're talking about a PC settings, they're not going to willing to do that. And I have a feeling that many are also not going to want to pay even $30 for a year of not worrying about to upgrade to the Windows 11. And when it comes down to the myths, Windows 10 dies completely on October 14. It goes end of life. It doesn't mean that tomorrow you will try to turn on your computer and it's not going to turn on. No, it's going to continue to function. You're still going to be able to play the games, do some Microsoft Office stuff, work, uh, listen music, watch movies and so on. You're just not going to receive the updates, which means that Eventually, probably after a couple of days or maybe weeks, your computer is going to be vulnerable for some viruses. Skipping security updates is fine if you're cautious. Um, many of us think like that. Um, many of us do that, I guess, especially if we're again talking about some home computers. But uh, no, long term, this is not a good idea. Nowadays, all of the computers are connected. Most of the computers are connected to the Internet and having a vulnerable system eventually going to lead to the point that uh, it's going to be used and you're going to be hacked. What is going to happen depends. Maybe you lose some data. Maybe you lose some precious uh, password.txt file that you have on your desktop. Uh, maybe your disk is going to be encrypted. So there's all sort of different things that can happen, but it's definitely not a good idea. It might, it was kind of okay-ish idea like 10, 15 years ago when many of us did not have an internet. So if your computer is completely local without any exposure to the public internet, it's kind of fine. Free extended support requires syncing all your PC data with Microsoft. Not true, just configuration. That's it. Microsoft doesn't need your pictures, music, games, saves, or, or again, your password.txt file. Trust me. Microsoft accounts are unnecessary for extended security updates. So this is the, another thing which uh, applies to ECU, extended security updates, and also applies to the usage of Windows 11. You need Microsoft account. You're obligated to have one. If you don't, you need to create it. And not like it would be some paid service or something complicated, but many of people don't like to be forced to sign up to some services, especially if you need to provide like some some private details like your name, last name, um, location, maybe even input credit card, despite the fact that you're not going to be billed for anything. So people don't like that, which is also the reason why there's hundreds of numerous videos in a YouTube circulating about how you can bypass Windows 11 requiring the Microsoft account. I have one with one video myself, so that's also quite a uh, big thing. And a myth number five, recent PCs cannot upgrade because Windows 11 demands impossible hardware. Um, no, it's not impossible hardware. And Windows 11, believe it or not, was released quite a long time ago. And even then it had those requirements. So if you have some computer, laptop, desktop, whatever purchased in the last couple of years, most likely there's no worry for you and you will have a TPM 2.0 and you will be able to run Windows uh, 11. As example, this problem kind of applies like for really old computers, something like 10 years old, which still, um, considering how much computers there are globally, percentage wise, many of them are very old. Yes, and many, many of them are not capable to run Windows 11. But if you do have more or less decent recent system, which I believe mostly applies, especially to enterprises and the companies, then this not affecting you at all and you should be able to successfully upgrade to the windows 11 so that's all i wanted to tell to you guys um hope you liked it don't forget to smash that like button and see you later